Welcome back guys. In this video lecture, we'll be talking about Bradford assay. Bradford assay is a practical approach. I'm doing here is a theoretical view of Bradford assay that you need to know before starting the practical and to know the principle of how I Bradford assay works and how it works. The thing is Bradford assay is a hugely important assay to detect the presence of the protein and the concentration of the protein in a particular solution. Right? So let's say you have a cell, you are expressing or you are doing certain changes and put the cell in different stressed condition and then you want to study the expression of proteins inside the cell, whether the expression of proteins increased or decreased in the cell. So in that case you need an assay to detect the concentration of protein in cell with time and that should be a quantitative assay. right? Bradford assay is that kind of assay. This is a quantitative assay which will detect the protein content of a cell okay, or of any solution. It, it can be a cell or it can be isolated from a cell. Whatever the scenario is, it can detect the protein content, the total protein content based on the absorbance shift. The, we know the colorimetric thing, colorimetric assay, the absorbance shift. Usually absorbance shift means we use dyes. In this case also we use a dye called Kumasi Brilliant Blue. Okay. Now when you use a dye, absorbance shift means, let, let me first write it, Kumasi uh, SCI, one minute let me check the spelling because uh, this is a tricky, SSI, SSI Kumasi Brilliant Blue. This is the dye that we use. Okay, Kumasi Brilliant Blue. And this whole process of protein concentration determination is based on the, remember, absorbance shift. Absorbance shift. Now, what is this absorbance shift? When you are using a particular dye, let's say this is the Kumasi Blue dye. This dye has two different color formation, two different color conditions in two different state. This is a, so let me just write dye, two different color state. First state is the state where it is an acidic state, right? Or it is also called as a cationic state. And this state is unstable. This is also called the unstable state. In this acidic state, this Kumasi brilliant blue dye has a color reddish, red coloration, dark reddish coloration. On the other hand, if we place it in the basic condition or we call it an anionic state, this state is also called as a bound state and this is stable state and the coloration in this state is blue that's why it's called kumasi brilliant blue because actually the stable state condition for this dye give us the color blue right so now just imagine if a dye has this tendency of having two different colorations one a particular color at the beginning which is an unstable form that we pack them and, and, and put them for a chemical reagent form. So the chemical reagent that we will use in the lab will have this reddish, dark reddish brownish color. Then once we make that compound stable and once we make that in the anionic state, convert it to the anionic state, it will turn blue color. So when it will turn the blue coloration, the intensity of the color is again is going to tell us the amount of protein present by our naked eye. But remember, it's all about coloration. That means it's all about the fact of colorimetric assay. So we can detect the amount of compound present that will turn them to the blue. That is the blue compound, the blue complex for this dye present in a particular time using colorimetric assay, using spectrophotometer by observing them in 595 nanometer of wavelength, right? 
So the idea is normally we take this cumulative brilliant blue dye and we have let's say we have the concentration of proteins in different test tubes. Let's say it's a sample test and we use protein called BSA bovine serum albumin. So once we use that and we start adding this uh, acidic content, I mean the cumulative blue in the acidic form, it gives us the coloration of brownish. And then we once we add them to the protein, it will slowly start to change the color. Because in this case, the protein content, the amino acid, the charged amino acid in protein, they will form bonds, ionic interactions, Van der Waal interactions with this dye and make this dye stable and convert this dye to its stable form, also called bound state. Because now it is bound with the amino acids, bound with the proteins. So once this dye is bound with proteins, it called the bound state, it makes them, it makes this dye stable and then we get the coloration blue. So the amount or the concentration of protein present will be directly proportional to the coloration or the intensity of the color that we will see. The more the coloration, the more protein is present in our sample that we can detect with spectrophotometer, right. So this is the actual basic idea behind this Bradford agent. As a color shift. The shift process is from reddish to blue. This is called the phase shift. Okay. Now let's talk about the chemical mechanism behind this process. How this process actually works. That's why I'm doing this video. Because up till this process is very, very easy. Now, if you want to know the detailed process, it works something like this. We have the brilliant blue dye, let's say in the red coloration. Now this brilliant blue dye has a lone, play, lone pair of electron and that lone pair of electron is donated to the protein. Remember this is the protein in this native state. Native state, native folded state. Once it donates this lone pair of electron to the native protein and where it, it, it is donating it? It is donated to any ionizable group of amino acids. There are different amino acids making this protein and there are obviously ionizable groups present in the amino acids. So once this lone pair of electron is donated to any of the ionizable group of amino acid, what happens is the structure, the native structure of the protein gets distorted. So as the native state of this protein gets distorted, it becomes kind of unstable in its structure. Let's say this. Now the protein is exposing all of its hydrophobic residues. Not all, but some. Some of the hydrophobic residues of those proteins start to be exposed outside due to this native state disruption. It's now in outside. So now this protein become unstable, it is now unstable. So this dye is making this protein unstable, why to combine with this dye, uh, protein? Because this dye in its form, in this form is also unstable. So it is interacting with the protein and make it unstable and now both of them are unstable, they can pair with themselves using ionic bond. How? Now this protein, all the amino acids that are present with positive amino groups, the amino groups that are positive here, using those groups, this protein is interacting with all the negative groups that are present in brilliant blue dye and they will pair via ionic interaction. They will bind with themselves by ionic interaction and this interaction get much more stabilized by the surface van der Waals force that is generated between this dye and this protein complex. So ultimately this dye and protein complex once they are arranged within itself it becomes this dye is in the bound form and now it becomes anionic in nature. Previously it is cationic now it is anionic form in nature this is in bound form and it turns the color of this dye to blue. First it was red 
but now it is turned into blue coloration and this thing we can detect so the higher the protein content the higher the blue coloration the higher the complex is formed the higher the blue coloration that is formed that we can detect using spectrophotometer at 595 nanometer of wavelength of light and that is extremely helpful for us to understand the concentration of a protein in a sample this is the exact way of Bradford assay works okay so now but there is a simple problem that when we use these processes by extracting the protein sequences sometimes we add SDS it's a detergent sodium dodecyl sulfate to kind of break down the protein contents to, to, to extract the protein from membrane because if sometimes what happens we need to check the membrane protein contents so we use SDS to take out the membrane proteins so in this that those cases SDS sometimes attached with these proteins it remain attached with the proteins so once the SDS is attached with the proteins SDS can hinder this whole process SDS can create certain problems with this overall processes okay that is a difficulty so that's why after this process after several times this is the conventional Bradford assay but then it is modified in several way to exclude that SDS thing so if you are using SDS to extract the protein from membrane and then check using Bradford assay you should be very careful and you should be careful that the very low concentration of SDS should be present otherwise it will give wrong results because if SDS is present with protein it will not allow this protein to bind with the brilliant blue dye and so the complex will not form properly so you will get a false result okay so that's kind of it guys if you like this video hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that and share this to everyone in social networks thank you